The Gothic subculture has existed for a long time, deriving from New England during the rise of the Gothic rock music scene of the 80s. But even though its origins come from music, the subculture has evolved to be more than just a music scene. Don't get me wrong, the music genre still arguably plays the most important and represented role in the Gothic subculture. But it's become more of a form of expression, allowing others to take the biggest aspects of the subculture and use them as an inspiration to create something new. From movies, video games, cartoons, and of course, fashion. But this also means that others can experiment with the subculture, and diversify it into dozens of other versions of goth. It's funny how so many people call goth stereotypical, when it's obvious that it's more than just a single idea. So for this list, I'll be going over 20 variants of the gothic subculture, their origins, and what separates them from the traditional goth while still paying a homage to it. Note, we are only going over other variants of goth, not groups similar to it, meaning groups like punk, emo, and scene will not be featured on this list, as while they are similar in some ways, they are also considered completely different. Plus, they could probably fill their own list. Welcome to Cackling Pumpkins, and these are 20 different types of goth. Traditional Goth Traditional Goth, or Trad Goth for short, is where things all started. The Gothic subculture taken to its form from the 80s, from the days of Bauhaus preaching about how Bela Lugosi's dead and the cure bringing us a strange day to remember. The look was inspired by the appearance of singers and bands that popularized a Gothic rock genre. The Sisters of Mercy, Alien Sex Fiend, The Cure, Southern Death Cult, 45 Grave, The March of Violets, and Bauhaus are just a few of the biggest examples of artists to help form the origin of what we love today. Some of the elements taken from these artists include big hair, pale white skin, fishnets, ripped clothing, dark makeup, chains, boots, spikes, and enough leather to make a greaser jealous. But despite being the first variant, it does have some punk elements as well. But this look isn't something you can just slap on. Many of those in the scene spend a hefty amount of time prepping themselves for the day ahead. I'll be honest, I'm a little envious, because I wish I had that kind of patience. Baby Bat High school is probably one of the most important times for discovering who you really are. A lot of teenagers will experiment in more ways than their parents would like to know. To find out not only what they want to be when they graduate, but their taste, sexuality, identification, views, and who they are in this world. This is the point in time many have tried the gothic subculture, but since they have either just discovered or finally wanted to be a part of this group, they might not have a complete understanding of either what it is or how they would want to express their love for all things goth. Most older goths refer to these experimenting kids as baby bats. A baby bat is someone who is just stepping into the goth scene for the first time. Their appearance may seem a bit confused to say the least. Heck, I was a baby bat at one point, and while I labeled myself a goth in 2011, I looked more like an emo kid than anything else. One thing about growing up is that we change as we get older. We gain new interests and sometimes become tired of the same thing over and over. Or at least find out the first thing we are now might not be the person you'll want to be later. As while some baby bats may continue to be goth and learn more about its ways, some others may move on and try something else. This is most likely where the it's just a phase trope came from. But hey, I remember my mom told me these words when I was growing up. Let your kids be who they want to be, so they have a better idea of who they are in the future. Whether that be goth for life, or maybe something else. Casual if you at all feel intimidated by the amount of work that a traditional goth puts into their appearance, but still want to be a part of the scene, then I have good news for you. Casual goths are those in the subculture who really don't care about how they look. For them, it's just put on something simple yet black. Maybe a chain or some ripped jeans, or maybe not. Don't worry about it. Those who are casual goths may return home from a hard day and just do their own thing. It's hard to explain in a way. It's a living life just a little darker. Nothing more, nothing less. Short and sweet. And while it's completely okay for others to spend time on their appearance and be more dedicated to the subculture, it's also okay for others to make it a simple part of their life. Burlesque Goth Burlesque Goth makes a mix between classy and sexy. Inspired by Victorian-themed burlesque shows, which were popular in London between the 1830s and the 1890s, and making its way to American culture during the 1840s. This was a point in time where even just showing your leg was considered scandalous. Hence why the subculture makes such a combination. Burlesque goths mix older fashion while revealing a bit more skin. Burlesque goth is so popular that even Marilyn Manson's wife from 2005 to 2007, Adida Von Tees, dresses similarly to burlesque goth fashion. Victorian 
probably one of the most well-known variants of the Gothic subculture, and the most formal of the bunch, is Victorian Goth. Victorian Goth mixes elements of both the traditional Gothic subculture and the Victorian era taking place from 1837 to 1901. The reason this is one of the most popular variants is most likely due to the amount of Gothic literature that helped define many aspects of the subculture that was written during this era. Dracula by Bram Stoker in 1897, Strange Case of Dr. Draco and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson in 1886, and The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo in 1831 are just a few examples. Of course, Victorian inspirations are just used for fashion, ruffles, top hats, corsets, and any other fancy piece of clothing that would be seen worn by those who were invited to the ball. It's like taking Cinderella's white dress and dipping it in ink. This may be one of the most difficult forms of the gothic subculture to keep up with due to the hot temperatures being your worst enemy. This is why many Victorian goths usually carry a parasol to stay safe from the summer heat. Pastel while the goth scene is often associated with dark colors and themes, pastel goth is the complete opposite, but only color-wise. Pastel goths still love the darker, more macabre aspects of the subculture, but also add a bit of color to it. Okay, saying a bit might be understating it. And don't get me wrong, it's still common for pastel goths to wear black, but it's often accompanied with every other color of the rainbow. Pastel goth is actually a more recent form of the subculture, coming during the early 2010s from the website Tumblr. Japanese street fashion or Harajuku fashion, alongside Korea's Olzong, which means best face or good looking, also inspired a lot of the visual aspects of pastel goth. However, many people within the scene have debated on whether or not pastel should be considered as a form of goth due to the bright colors and strikingly different appearance from most other goths. Romantic Ravens, the light of the moon, and black roses. You may think that these things are mainly for traditional goths, but there are more aspects of romantic goths. Romantic goths enjoy the dark, lovely aspects of life. They are more upbeat than most in the subculture. They dress similarly to Victorian goths, with lacy clothing and suits, but with some modern elements such as chokers and spikes. The music that most associates them are more softer songs, the earliest Nightwish songs such as While Your Lips Are Still Red, Turn Loose the Mermaids, and The Islander best suit this variation of goth. More classical songs and opera music also work. Most people within the romantic scene prefer quieter locations to hang out, such as walks at night, libraries, parks, or they'll just stay at home and enjoy their surroundings. Truly romantic goth is the most peaceful variant of the subculture. New Goth while some may simply call New Goth, Pastel Goth under a different name, it's worth noting that New Goth can survive on its own. But much like most other variants, it still has its similarities. Both are relatively new in the goth scene, both have Japanese influences but still pay homage to the traditional goth ways, but one thing that separates it from Pastel is its inspirations from 90s grudge. However, many have accepted New Goth as more of an aesthetic than its own group of the gothic subculture, primarily online with sites such as Pinterest, Twitter, and, like Pastel again, Tumblr. Some would even call it Hipster Goth, which considering its more modern look would make sense. Cyber Goth What happens when you put a goth in a dance club surrounded by ravers with electronic music blaring around them? They might either leave or discover something entirely new. Something like Cyber Goth. Cyber Goth is a mix between both goth and the rave scene. They have more of an interest in electronic music rather than just gothic rock. Cyber Goth started in 1988 in Berlin, Germany by the Games Workshop, but was only featured in a science fiction fantasy war game, Dark Future, and wouldn't sprout out as its own scene until 1999 when Gothic Gravers, or Gravers for short, would mix the Gothic aesthetic with an industrial look, resulting in a colorful steampunk-esque style. Pipes and hair, gas masks, ripped clothing, bright neon colors, and, of course, a ray of inspiration. Vampire Let's be honest, vampires are pretty fucking cool. Even those with a more brighter outlook can agree with this. Eternal blood-sucking demons who fear sunlight and sleep in coffins as they transform into a bad and live with armadillos? Yeah, a little off topic, but in the 1931 Universal Dracula film, armadillos can be seen in his crypt. This is because armadillos are the only animal besides humans that can carry the disease known as leprosy. Fascinating. And I'm not the only one who thinks this. Okay, well I mean with vampires in general, not the armadillo thing. Vampire goths also have a fondness for this horrid Halloween staple. 
These people love vampires. They love movies such as Dracula, Nosferatu, and 1982's The Hunger. It could probably tell you all about Alucard, Lestat de Lancourt, and other fellow vampires. Much like romantic and Victorian goths, vampire goths wear more old-fashioned clothing. Some vampire goths also try to replicate a vampire's teeth, or that be with fake fangs or, to another extreme, sharpening their own teeth. Now you may be wondering, but is it true that vampire goths actually drink blood? It is worth noting that while there are some vampire goths that don't mind drinking blood consensually, there are also those who wouldn't go that far. But it's still not worth judging a book by its cover. Trust me, we get that enough as it is. Emo Goth While emo is definitely its own thing and not a different version of goth, there is one that meets the best of both worlds, mixing both emo and goth to create Emo Goth. As the name implies, emo goths enjoy both the traditional aspects of the gothic subculture while also including aspects from the emo scene. An emo goth can jump between listening to Bauhaus, to Linkin Park, to Shadow Project, to My Chemical Romance. From watching Nightmare Before Christmas, to reading Call of Cthulhu, to playing Shadow the Hedgehog on the PlayStation 2. But the fusion doesn't stop at interest. The fashion of emo goths also mixes in elements from both scenes, from goth's big hair to emo's red streaks while still wearing all black along the way. I think emo goth can make us think one thing, and it's that while emo and goth are completely different, that doesn't mean we have to be enemies. Heck, you don't even have to be an emo goth to experience both aspects. You could be a goth and play Devil May Cry, or be emo and listen to Nightwish. You can define yourself as whoever you want to be. It's all up to you! J Goth Often referred to as Gothic Lolita, J-Goth is a form of goth that originates from Japan. Unlike New Goth or Pastel Goth, which merely take inspiration from Japanese fashion, J-Goth actually comes from the country. J-Goth mixes together the gothic subculture with Lolita fashion. Lolita also takes some inspiration from Victorian fashion, so it turns out that Japanese fashion has more ties and connections to the gothic subculture than one might think. Many Japanese rock and punk artists tend to use J-Goth as their distinct visual style, some of which include Baby Metal, Yosai Teikoku, Velvet Eden, and a Candy Spooky Theater. J-Goths also have an infatuation with stuffed animals and porcelain dolls. This is most likely because porcelain dolls wear similar clothing to that of J-Goth fashion. Bubble Goth Bubble Goth is also a newer variation of the gothic subculture, being created by Curly Koi, a famous Estonian pop artist. The idea of Bubblegum Goth is to mix both dark elements and cute elements, to make a balance between beauty and creepy. For example, you could wear a cute little dress with ruffles and a corset, while that dress may be ripped up and being held by a spike chain. Curly started Bubblegum Goth after a critic referred to her as Bubblegum Goth after her Love Is Dead album was released on July 8, 2008, due to her musical style of mixing both techno and rock elements. This inspired her to, in quote, make the beautiful creepy and the creepy beautiful. Curly refers to many of her fans as Moon Children, as they also aim to support Curly by putting three dots on their forehead. Each dot represents a different goal set by Curly, these three being integrity, love, and unity. Gothabilly. Taking some of the oldest inspirations from this type, Gothabilly mixes the goth style with inspirations from 1950s fashion, more specifically the rockabilly scene. Rockabilly in itself is already a mix on its own, mixing both rock and country, so Gothabilly is technically a three-way fusion between gothic rock, rock, and country music. When it comes to fashion, Male gothabillies try to show masculinity, with leather jackets, ripped clothing, and anything else either an old greaser or motorcycle gang would wear. As females wear pencil skirts, heels, and have their hair be cut as Betty Bangs. While both in general use tattoos, polka dots, cherries, zombies, masculinity, and anything else that can be associated with country, rock, and goth. Fetish Goth some people believe that the gothic subculture is just one big kink, and while that's not true, it can be for some. Fetish goths are people who are okay with expressing their sexuality, often wearing enough leather to rival that of a dominatrix along with a few other BDSM garb. Chokers, leather gloves, knee-high boots, and PVC leather. Unlike most other forms of goth, fetish goth isn't associated with music in any way and is more about the sexual aspect. Fetish goths can be experimental with their sexuality, but that doesn't mean they're always craving sex. Remember, 
Keep your hands to yourself and ask for consent. Just because someone is open with their sexuality does not mean they're open for furry business. It's also worth noting that some fetish goths aren't into the sexual aspect and more the fashion. So please, be respectful and don't be a creep. Geek Goth Geeks are everywhere these days and are more open about their love for fictional media than ever. Hell, for a while in the 2010s, being a geek was actually trendy. Showing love for things like Marvel, Star Wars, Minecraft, Dragon Ball, and Super Smash Brothers is a lot more acceptable than back in our old school days, where we were shoved into our lockers just for mentioning a night of playing Dungeons and Dragons. So of course, geek culture would seep its way into the gothic subculture with the geek goth. Geek goths still wear all black, listen to gothic rock, but also have an interest in things like comic books, video games, and movies. Many geek goths love the idea of going to a convention and cosplaying as one of their favorite characters. For geek goths, fashion isn't really their main interest. They won't spend as much time working on their look as a Victorian or trad goth, but would much rather put on a band tee so they can head down to GameStop to make the ultimate decision. Doom Eternal or Animal Crossing New Horizons. Or if you're anything like me, you're just waiting for the next Smash Fighter to be revealed. Ninja Goth The Way of the Ninja Ninjas or shinobi were mercenaries of feudal Japan. They are typically hired for stealth missions, primarily for deception, assassination, sabotage, and psychological warfare. Their tactics were often looked down upon by other warriors at the time. Despite this, ninjas have become a topic of inspiration for fictional media, even if many of their features are often exaggerated for set content. As some fictional ninjas technically aren't real ninjas. Ninja Goth, also referred to as Street Goth, takes inspiration from these quick warriors, typically wearing clothing that covers one's features, such as a face mask and large hoods, apparel that is tight around the limbs yet loose around the torso. Some would also have straps and belts around their body. Some of the fashion aspects seems to take a lot of inspiration from ninjas of fictional media rather than historical warriors, such as Akali from League of Legends, Sheik from The Legend of Zelda, Valentine from Skullgirls, and several characters from Shonen Jump's Naruto, created by Masashi Kishimoto. Tribal Goth Tribal Goth mixes both the gothic subculture and belly dancing. It came after belly dancing started to become popular in America. Most tribal goths wear clothing that use more natural elements, such as wood, furs, gemstones, and bone. Most tribal goths expose a hefty amount of skin, primarily within the stomach area. They also take inspiration from Arabian and Egyptian culture, and of course, tribal goths love belly dancing. Tribal goths can sometimes be confused with hippie goth due to the more natural aspects. Oh hey, speaking of which, hippie goth. Hippies are known for their love of nature. They're animal friendly, typically vegan, and fight to protect Mother Nature's green grass. You'd probably think that wouldn't mix well with the dark and macabre gothic rock scene, but yet, here we are. Hippie goths are pretty much the same as regular hippies, but what makes them goth is their morbid curiosity and dark views, taking a much different approach to what most hippies are known for, but still would most likely be accepted by them as well. Unlike some other variants, hippie goth doesn't follow that many rules. They are, for the most part, quite mellow and are quick to accept others. One stereotype of the gothic subculture is that most goths are introverts and don't go outside very often, but hippie goths love to go out and explore mother nature and her great outdoors with their friends. Hippie goth isn't what you would expect from this scene, but it is a nice surprise nonetheless. Corp Goths as we get older, we begin to realize how hectic, demanding, and busy adult life is. It makes many people wonder if they can still express their love for all things dark in the years to come. How can you mix goth and employment? They say you should balance work and play, but not typically at the same time. But that's where corp goth comes in. Corp goths are those within the working world. They have to make a living like the rest of us, but since they work at a place that reprimands the gothic style and forces us to be more quote unquote professional, many have had to experiment with keeping their uniform intact while mixing the goth lifestyle. It has gotten to the point where many have began to admire this and started to make it its own scene. Since many corp goths are within the working world, they usually wear formal clothing, work pants, button up shirts, and overall more professional looking attire, but they also keep it simple. They don't go too far as that might go against their dress code, so they don't go wearing piercings, too much makeup, or spikes and change, but that won't stop them from putting those things on after they clock out. It's about balancing work life with goth life. With just a bit of restraint and responsibility, anyone can make this balance. 
There are god knows how many variations of the gothic subculture, way too many to list. And even if I went over every single one, a new variation could spring up the next day. So how about this? If you think I missed a variation or two, please put them in the comments down below. I may make a sequel to this video. And if you enjoyed, please like and share to those who you think may enjoy it. Your connection will be strange.